Hi everyone, and welcome to this quick introduction to the new features of storyboarding version 1.3. A lot of new features have been added since the initial release of storyboarding, so let's have a look at what was storyboarding version 1.0, just a quick recap so anyone knows what it's all about, and then we'll go through all the new features added until version 1.3. I'm going to open my script, so I select GSX bin and select the storyboarding version 1.0. So this is my uh, storyboarding script version 1.0 and you see that it requires a master composition here. So I create a new one, I'm going to call it master, but I can call it whatever I want, 10 seconds, 24 frames per second, it's perfect, full HD, and then I can import an Adobe Story script, so you have to go to Adobe Story and then export your script to ISTX uh, format, so you click OK, oh, no master composition. I hit the reload button to have my newly created composition inside, so import script. OK, this time it worked, and this is basically what it did in version 1. 1.0 it created a screenplay let's see here and inside of the composition you had your character composition and here the location composition so that was st quite straightforward uh, you had here the indication of the number of characters it created one composition per character and one composition per location so that was that was it, basically, and it only imported uh, Adobe Story Script. You also had, of course, here all the uh, scene composition. So I'm going to hit Control Z, and I'm going to open the new version, storyboarding, sorry, version 1.3. Oh, it's working perfectly. So now, as you can see, we've got here a new button, Load Settings, and I will go on that a bit later. So I'm going to click Import Screenplay, and you'll notice that the name changed. It's not Story Screenplay, it's just Screenplay. That's because I can still open Adobe Story Screenplays, but I can also open now Final Draft Screenplays. So be sure to export your final draft screenplay in the FDX format, which is XML, and it's used since Final Draft 7 or 8, I guess. Uh, if you had previous version of Final Draft, it would be FDR, and it won't work. If you are using Adobe Story, you can export to FDX2, and you see why it could be interesting from Adobe Story to export in the FDX format. But we'll go there uh, in a few minutes. So. I click OK, it's still loading my screenplay and basically it did the same thing. I've got my characters, my location here and of course my uh, scenes there. If I go to my main composition, you'll see that I still have all my scenes properly uh, imported and if I go to the David living room as we did a few seconds ago you can notice some new changes well first of all you've got an action layer which is basically a null object you can see there and this null object um, at the correct timing you can have you can see you have markers here with descriptions and these descriptions are basically the Para action paragraph that are our new scene. So if you have a storyboard artist that needs to draw the designs of this scene, it can have all the action scene to know what's going on on screen. Then you have the exact same thing for the characters here. But notice that here you have a little line, a scene line. And this scene line is the duration of the dialogue. Here, if I double click on my marker, I can see that the full dialogue is Hi, I'm David, and it takes two seconds. That's because 
The final draft uh, format doesn't export timing information and I have to parse all the, the screenplay to uh, calculate the correct timing and duration of each scene. And as everything has to be timed independently, I can have access to the correct timing, the duration of, the, of each dialogue and everything like that. So it's quite interesting because it allows us to have these features. And if you import, uh, let's import a screenplay. I'm going to put that in a folder here and say final draft. I'm just going to duplicate my master here. I'm going to create a new folder here called Adobe Story. Let's rename it to Master Story. It will be easier. Reload Master Story. Okay, that's it. So I re-import my screenplay. It's all in the correct location. I go there. I go to my living room and you'll notice that I've got my action layer but it's empty and I've got here my character layer and it's empty because um, the way Adobe Story Scripts uh, screenplays are imported uh, doesn't allow yet to have this information. Um, it will eventually be in the next update but in some next update, uh, but the um, the thing is that the ASTX format is much more complicated to interpret than the FDX format. But if you are using Adobe Story, once again, you can export your screenplay to FDX format and have access to all of this. And as a matter of fact, I'm using Adobe Story to write my screenplay and the FDX for file I imported is not written in Final Draft but in Adobe Story exported as a Final Draft document so you don't lose anything. So I'm going to delete all that because I don't need them anymore. So that was the new features from uh, version 1.2 and 1.3. Those uh, nice markers here with all the metadata you need and all the information you need to um, go faster in your iterative process of designing your uh, screenplay and your storyboards. But let's have a look now at the load settings version, the load settings button, sorry. And let's click on it. It asks me for an XML file, which basically I have here, called settings.xml. I click OK, it says settings updated, and what's all this about? So I'm going to my desktop, going to storyboarding, and open the settings.xml in a notepad++. So what can we see here? Well, we can see uh, two preference type, default and timing. And what are they about? Default allows you to change some default behaviors from the script. And the timing allows you to change uh, the the timing calculation when you import a final draft um, screenplay. So comp margin is the duration of the margins I use in my composition. So by default it's one second and you see here there is a slight overlap between the two to allow you to move smoothly your uh, cut point. So you can change this information by uh, changing the margin here and it's in seconds so you can it can be one second two second or 0.5 second any anything you want then the comp duration um, this is when you import an adobe story script in which you have forgotten to embed uh, timing information if you forgot to embed timing information when you export your Adobe Story script, it won't use the timing calculation that the engine is using to calculate the duration from a final draft file. It will just use a basic comp duration. Um, this will eventually change in future version, but for now that's how it works. So you can change the default duration from 10 seconds to whatever you want. 
Then you have those two parameters, duplicate look for duplicate location and duplicate characters, which are both set to false. And I'm going to set them to true, and I show you exactly what it does. But just to to go over it, it's it allows you it allows the script to duplicate all the characters and the location uh, for each scene. So if you have to change, for example, the way your character is dressed in every in every scene, then you might want to check this uh, option to true because you will have a different uh, character composition for every scene. So you won't have to go in the character here and duplicate, duplicate, duplicate and lost track of where your character was or each duplicate goes where. So that's, that's what these options do for the characters and the location. And I'm going to import a script with this option to true to show you how it works. Here we've got the action set to true. It's the um, the this layer, the the layer actions. So if you set that to false, it won't include uh, this layer if you don't need it. On the timing preference, we've got here all the timing and using by default for um, timing the screenplay duration and the scenes duration. I'm using. 15, 15 second uh, per action word. So each time I see a word in a uh, per action paragraph, I add uh, 0 0.15 of a second. I do the exact same thing with dialogue, but it's half a second per, per word. I had an additional duration of 2 of 0.2 seconds uh, per character in the scene. And then if my duration is a fade in, fade out, or stuff like that, uh, anyway, a fade, not a cut, I add one second to the scene. So that's basically what it does. And you can, depending on the way you write, uh, if you uh, if you write uh, more dialogue or less action and you, you can adjust the timing to better suit uh, your needs and your style. So that's all for the settings.xml file. By the way, the default settings.xml file is included when you download the script and all the default parameters are the default parameters of the script. So here we go. I'm going to save my change. So I set that to true. Click OK, and I'm going to keep this uh, uh, folder. I'm going to create a new one. Uh, say duplicate, uh, and I'm going to copy this command D up. Go to duplicate and master duplicate. I'm going to load my settings because the first settings I loaded weren't modified so I'm loading my setting there. Okay. I'm going to reload my list of uh, composition and select master duplicate and I'm going to re-import my final draft screenplay. Okay, and now if I go to characters, I can see that I've got composition for each of my scenes for my characters. So I know that I've got a special uh, dark dark voiceover uh, composition for scene 12, 13, 14, 15, 17, 18, 20, and so on. And if I double click on this, I can see that I've got already a composition inside it, which is dark voice over. In fact, if I go here to the main subfolder, you'll see that I still have my default composition. What it does is that if you have a rough design of your character, for example, for this dark voice character, you can drag and drop into this composition. And so it will be included in all the composition where you have dark voice over. So you don't have to drag and drop it in each and everything 
And if, for example, for scene 15, you have to have it in a, another way or have another design, you can just drag and drop the design on top of this composition and hide this composition. So it's uh, it's best of both worlds. So if you still have just one rough design, it will be uh, pasted on all this composition and then you can add the custom design per scene. So that's that's the way the duplicate composition works and you've got the same for uh, the locations. So that's all the new features of uh, Adobe, of not Adobe Story, sorry, of Storyboarding 1.3. Uh, I hope you'll enjoy this. Of course, a lot of bugs have been squashed with uh, character encoding and uh, little background work for some of the cool features that will be uh, coming in the next update and expect a major update in August. Uh, next August uh, for storyboarding version 1.5 where most of these um, settings will be stored in a nice UI so you don't have to mess with writing XML. Uh, I understand that writing XML can seem very power user and I wanted to to go that way, power user first and um, then add it on a more user friendly way. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and enjoy storyboarding version 1.3. You can download it uh, at uh, ascripts.com. And if you want to know all the background behind this script, you can go to my uh, movie project blog, which is mito.mn, M-I-T-H-O.mn, uh, which is... Um, an animation movie I'm making in my living room with almost no budget and I'm developing all these scripts for this project so if you want to know more uh, and more behind the scenes uh, go there and as usual you can reach me on Twitter uh, at yenafi y-e-n-a-p-h-e or at yenafi at gmail.com see you next time for more tutorials and uh, information about these great scripts. Bye!